Mr. President, 15 months ago, I spoke here on the Senate floor to commemorate the victims of a, a shooting at Oxford High School in Oxford, Michigan. And Mr. President, just over two weeks ago, as a gunman opened fire at Michigan State University, our state lived through yet another nightmare. Another routine evening turned tragic. Another community was left scarred by unimaginable gun violence. And another three families will never see their children come home. Just after 8 p.m. on a crisp Monday evening, gunfire erupted at MSU's Berkey Hall. And as the alerts poured in, students all across campus huddled in fear. Some blockaded their dorm rooms and turned off the lights. Others grabbed whatever objects were nearby and in case they needed to fight back. Parents called their children to check in if they were safe and worried if it could be the last time that they spoke. Those near the gunmen had hid under tables and ran for their lives. One student said it sounded like a stampede as they tried to escape. In the end, three of their classmates did not make it. Three students who had their entire lives ahead of them were stripped of their futures in an instant. Ariel Anderson, a 19-year-old from Harper Woods, was a sophomore. She enjoyed roller skating, photography, and live concerts. A committed student, she was working to graduate early and embark on a career as a pediatrician. She had a fierce intellect and a deep love for her family, touching everyone in her life with a kind and gentle spirit. Alex Werner was 20 years old. She was a junior from Clawson and was studying to become a forensic scientist. She was a gifted student athlete in high school, excelling in softball and basketball and volleyball and a dedicated member of her community. Friends and teachers described her as a leader and a giver, someone who was always smiling. And one of her peers remembered that she was, quote, the very best of us. Brian Frazier, the 20-year-old sophomore from Gross Point, had an infectious smile and a sense of humor that could brighten an entire room. As president of Phi Delta Theta fraternity, he demonstrated a commitment to service and to leadership. He had been studying business and economics when his life was cut short. As a father and a fellow Spartan, my heart breaks for these gifted students, for their families and friends, and the time that was stolen from them. My heart breaks for those who survived, who will carry the weight of this horrific memory for years to come. And while this scene unfolded, first responders and law enforcement officials bravely leaped into action. Dedicated doctors and nurses have worked around the clock to help the five students who were critically injured. And I'm grateful to these men and women for their tireless work. At the same time, I know that the students and staff at MSU and the broader East Lansing community will need time. They will need time to heal in the wake of this tragedy. But they shouldn't have to do that work alone. We can honor them by taking meaningful action, and we must do that now. Last year, Congress showed that common sense reform is still possible with the passage of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the most significant legislation to address gun violence in nearly three decades. It invests in mental health resources, expands school safety measures, enhances background checks, and includes new guidelines 
to make sure we keep guns from getting into the wrong hands. And while it's clear that this law did not go far enough, it has begun to make critical changes. We are already starting to see its benefits reach my state. Last week, Senator Stabenow and I welcomed $8 million in federal funding to the Michigan State Police. This investment will help combat drug violence and enhance crisis intervention programs all across the state of Michigan. But there's so much more that we can and we must do. We must pass legislation to expand federal background checks to all gun sales, a measure that I helped to reintroduce here in the Senate and one that is supported by the overwhelming majority of the American people. We can enact reasonable limits on high-capacity magazines and close dangerous loopholes. We can pass red flag laws while still respecting the rights of law-abiding, responsible gun owners. And we can invest in first responders like those who so bravely answered the call at Michigan State. The choice is ours to make. We can honor these young adults by making change, or we can play politics and let this cycle continue. But for Ariel, uh, Alex, and Brian, and for the students and staff at Michigan State, and for every family that has been torn apart by gun violence, we must choose to act.